All right, thanks. Thanks everyone for coming to my, uh, my talk. We're going to be talking about uh, Hacks House today, uh, home of the ubiquitous South. Uh, when we started, it was called uh, Home of the Nefarious South, but uh, one of the mods told me to change that. So the structure of my call today, we're going to talk about the oranges of Hacks House, uh, current status, uh, future intent, so what we plan to do in the future, and a, and a bit of a call to action. I think I left the call to action out, but we'll get there. Right, so, uh, so who am I? I think the scavenger hunt is closed, but there's a QR code. More than welcome. Right, so first and foremost, I'm a father to a young girl, Haley. I am a husband to Michelle. I'm a, a veteran of the British Airborne, uh, where I served six years, two tours in the Afghan. I am uh, the founder of Redo.io, a cybersecurity specialist recruiting company. That's, uh, that's what I typically look like. <clears throat> and then obviously I'm the, the founder of Hack South. And uh, unfortunately I'm a passionate helper. I tend to make other people's problems my problems. Right, so the origins of, uh, of Hack South. So I was on a, on a Discord server. I had found out about Discord and I was a, a part of a, a community called uh, the Many Hats Club, which was a, a dumpster for cybersecurity pretty much across the globe. Some more sketchy people than others. Uh, it had about eight and a half thousand members. As you can see why it was a dumpster fire. It was run by this guy called uh, Cybersex2. So it had eight and a half thousand members. It ran podcasts. It hosted all sorts of people. Uh, I think the, the most nefarious was uh, McAfee. We interviewed him twice, once in a Faraday cage. Um, and yeah, a lot, of, a lot of shenanigans. But it was a great community and it got me thinking and it got me excited about Discord and, and cybersecurity. So I was thinking to myself, there's, there's got to be something in South Africa, surely. So. Uh, I looked around and I found a, a server called ZA Tech. If there's any mods or staff here from ZA Tech, enjoy. <laughs> so I, uh, I was introduced to cybersecurity many years ago um, and I decided to become a recruiter in it because I liked connecting people and I liked helping uh, people get jobs. So I joined ZA Tech and I saw they had a jobs channel. Me being a recruiter, I was like, let me post my jobs. So it looks like a cool community. I posted, my, uh, I posted a job for a local job, a uh, junior entry-level pen testing job, something everyone's always looking for. And some guy DM me, he's like, who the hell are you? Why are you posting jobs on here? You're not allowed to post jobs. You're not a company. And I'm like, well, I kind of am, but all good. And then I found another channel where you could, uh, where people posted like, hey, I'm looking for a job. I've been laid off for this. And, so I thought, surely I can go on there and say, hey, uh, you're looking for this? I've got something like that. Let's talk. I got a message from the same guy. I was like, who the hell are you? You can't do that. So I thought, no, screw this, man. This can't, this, it can't be this way. So I then had a discussion with Ross, hip and, hip and sec. So we spoke, and uh, I said, I want to start a community in South Africa for cybersecurity. Um, we spoke and he said, yeah, let's do Slack because people can be on Slack all day. So uh, I tried to push Discord. We went with Slack, which was fine. Slack won. And then Slack was terrible. Uh, it just didn't have the same feel and vibe that we had on Discord with voice chat and everything. So I, <laughs> I decided upon myself, screw it, we're going to Discord. But we kept both and at one point I shut... I think the Slack is still going. I just don't know what's happening there. I lost the password. <laughs> okay, so what happened right at the beginning? So Fenrir Sec joined, a friend of mine from the Many Hats Club, Shadow Rizzler, I still don't know who they are, and Megalodon uh, from the Slack. So everything was going well, and uh, I was on the way to the airport to pick up someone. And I got a WhatsApp message, I think, from Megalodon or someone saying, dude, they're raiding the server. And we had a, a bunch of Nazi propaganda go out on the, on the main channel. I didn't know what to do. I've never run a Discord. So I, uh, we'll get there now. So the question is, how did Megalodon become a mod? 
I asked who's been a mod before, never met Megalodon in my life, and he said, I've been, so I was like, congratulations, you're a mod. <laughs> really good uh, uh, privilege escalation there. Uh, and then Mooncake also became an admin on the spot. Right, so. <laughs> They're animating there, it's good. So then COVID happened. We were, we were tracking COVID from about December. I remember the first day there was two cases in South Africa and I was like, oh man, this is gonna be bad. My wife still spoke to me, she's like, how bad is it gonna be? I was like, if everyone gets sick, the water doesn't work, Woolies hasn't got food, chaos. But the good thing with COVID is it really drove the server to get a lot new members and get a conversation going. Also, everyone had so much time on their hands. So one of the things we started doing during COVID is we did a, I started a channel called Media Verification. I got sick to death of fake news. And I'm not talking about like ivermectin type fake news. I was talking about people saying, oh, they're amassing troops and the government is doing this and doing that. There was a, you might remember, there was a big post all over social media about uh, military vehicles being amassed at Cape Town Harbor. So we just did some OSINT and it turned out Botswana had ordered some APCs like eight years prior, and it was just a picture in Walfus Bay going to Botswana. Now, it was very hard for us to push that information back out, but we tried our best, and we went on social networks, and we just commented to people like, guys, this is fake, and reported as fake, and if anyone found something that even sounded remotely possible, we posted a media verification, we tagged it, there was a couple people that helped, Jock, yeah, you were on there, um, and then we try to figure it out ourselves, so at least we can keep ourselves informed what's going on. We had lots of different cases. I think well, that was one of them. Uh, what was this? Oh, this was a police bulletin, I think, about WhatsApp. Mass graves in Joburg, which turned out was something from Brazil many, many years ago. And uh, yeah, activity was booming. So, where are we today? We're gonna look a bit back, we're gonna look now, then a bit back, and then we're gonna come back to the present. So currently we have uh, 1,460 humans. So that's people that have accepted COC and can engage in the, the, the server. We have 14 FNGs. We won't get into what that is. We have nine bots. We have 518 people on a, with a role called CTF crew, which we, we help people that have never done a CTF say, hey, I found the CTF. Who wants to help me with it? People come join uh, and they learn something new. Now what you'll see is we have 1,460 members and at the moment when I took the screenshot, it might have been late at night, we had 175 live members or online members. So these are some of the more prominent people that run the role, uh, run the server. There's Root, which is me. There's uh, El Presidente, which is Megalodon. We have four staff members, nine mods. We have a few former mods. And then we have uh, Duffy the Dussy, which is our moderator bot. Fun story, I forgot to put it in here. I had a really cool idea one day, and I said, uh, you know what would be funny? Because the mod is, it's, uh, the bot is meant to protect the server. I said, we should call it the S South African Police Service, and we gave it a SAPS logo. And then we had three random strangers join the server, and immediately when I saw that, it was like, hey, who are you? Hacking is dangerous, and no, 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 no. I was like, this is a really bad idea to welcome people. So we changed it back to Duffy. We have 197 roles. Some of them are functional, some of them are just, we have a role called trolley liquor. I still don't know who thought it up, but. <laughs> right, so yeah, members, that's the growth we've had since. You'll see there's like a sharp, a sharp start. It's because that's when we decided we need to start monitoring the stats and, the, and, and what's going on. All right, so all time, we have sent 119,687 messages. That's where we got the bot. <laughs> so in 2020, you can see there, we had roughly 19,500 messages, 44.28 uh, messages per person per year. COVID. We had 80,000 messages with roughly 94 messages per person per year. And then we only had 15,000. And then we only had seven. 
So as of far 2023, we've had 7,000 messages go, of which I'm easily sure 3,000 of those is with B-Sides. The whole B-Sides conference is planned on Hack South. Thank yourself that you're not a mod or a staff member on Hack South, because there is just channels on channels. So these are the top performing people on Hack South, of course, mostly staff members, and a few rarities. Toko, he's a oh you're a staff you're a staff member, yeah, yeah. So we have a few a uh, few people that really ape in their time. Uh, at one point we were trying to generate activity, so I was like, you know what, we should recognize people that are active um, and people that really contribute a lot. So we made a role called honorable member. I have a sticker somewhere for you, if you are an honorable member. And then we had, uh, we had different roles. So there's levels with me six, one of our bots. So it depends on how you on VC and talk and reply, you, you get points. Dominic, uh, Dominic White really, for some reason, enjoys this. He's always checking his level in the week. Um, and then we started a new role now, new to Hack South. So if you're below a level five, you're that. So as we can see with the stats over the last years, uh, activity has really dropped off a cliff. Um, do we really need more members? Not really, we, but we would love more. So what is the, the, the flaw that we have? We, we have a place where people can come together. Oh yeah. <laughs> the amount of time it took me to make that stupid thing and then I see this funny random guy on the right hand side that no one ever talks about. So, so we have a, we have a, we have a, the, the conundrum that we have, my notes are missing, is um, we've got a great place to bring people together and do things that can help change the fabric of cybersecurity and technology in South Africa. We have 1,400 members, of which probably 5% engage. Every time I meet someone and they're remotely involved in this industry, I ask them a question, are you in Hack South? A lot of people go, yeah, and, and then they always, the next thing out of their mouth is like, I really just lurk. It's like, it's a, we need a, we're going to talk about that now. So, let's look at some positives quickly. And what, what you can get with being involved in Hack South. So, uh, Offensive Security rolled out an initiative where they were looking for organizations where they could donate 10 PWK vouchers to. I thought these were, I, I knew how expensive they were, I didn't realize how expensive they were. I was telling everyone, yeah, 100,000 worth of training. 100,000 rand worth of training. So offensive security uh, with myself and uh, Monks, um, you know, I works at Offsec, got 10 PWK vouchers. We started talking it through, I was helping in the beginning and then Toko also, uh, helped out and assisted there as well. We can't just give anyone a PWK voucher. They, we need to make sure there's some technical standard there that they can actually grasp it and pass it. We set up channels where people could get uh, mentored by other people with OSCP, because we have an OSCP role, so we could tag them and collaborate. Um, is there anyone here that got paid forward? Okay, there is people at the conference, I've seen them. So here's, here's now shows you part of the problem we had. We had this. We gave out 10, and then we got another 10. Offensive were like, this is awesome. So they gave us another 10. We struggled to find people in South Africa that wanted this. We asked these people to do, I think we asked them to do one medium box on Hack the Box. Send us the report, and then we give them the voucher and we'd mentor them. We struggled so hard to get someone in South Africa that wanted a 20,000 Rand course. We started going outwards. We got people in Nigeria. Kenya, Madagascar. We gave them all out, and we've had a lot of people pass their OSCP. So here. Oh. The uh, animation actually did work. So these are all people that got PWK vouchers, uh, and quite a few of them are passed already. On Hacks House, we've helped students. We have a dedicated student area. Yes, that's for university students, but also for students that are just learning. Um, we have areas where we can have focus groups, we have talk about certifications and training. So before you pay your money, come ask us, hey, what do you think about CEH? You can ask there and someone will tell you what, they, what their direct thoughts were on it. <laughs> we have a, <laughs> not going to get into that, we need sponsors for next year. Uh, we have a channel called Resources. I remember that was a super active channel. Anytime someone found a free course somewhere or a massive discount or something, we posted it there and people aped into it. 
Internships. Uh, many companies have used Hacksaw to find interns, namely MWR, Telspace, Trend Micro, and Orange Cyber Defense. Megalodon found his internship at Orange through Hacksaw, I believe. And uh, quite a few people uh, have found out about the MWR stuff. Jobs. We have three dedicated channels where I can post jobs as much as I want. Uh, one where we post jobs, one where people post their availability, one where we have a space where people can ask career-related questions. P.S. If there are any advanced kernel vulnerability researchers among you, I'm hiring. <laughs> right, so future intent. Firstly, a fair warning. This is my personal opinion as a member of Hacks House and does not reflect the opinions of other members, mod staff, <laughs> or Papa Megalodon. Now, I don't have all the answers, but let's, let's take a peek. Right, to activity. What do we require? We need activity, engaging activity. We're not asking people to come in and just post nonsense. Ask a question, put something in mind, if there's something you're struggling with, tell us about it. What does this activity require? It requires membership engagement. It requires initiatives. And it requires one brave soul to ask a question that starts a conversation that could last for days. We see you. We know the majority of people lurk. All are welcome to lurk, but with Hacksaw, you only gain what you put in. What you put in affects not only you, but others on the server. So come join us and ask something, say something, challenge a friend to a challenge on Hack the Box or Try Hack Me, or a hackathon. I know Toko is a busy man, but if you message him saying, hey, I'm new to this, I found Try Hack Me, I'd like to do a box. I've had people ask me that, thinking I know what I'm doing with cyber. And then I go, you know what? I tag Toko, and Toko's like, yeah, sure, I've got, tonight. I've got time tonight. Not in work hours, France. Um, and he'll help someone. We have, I have so many people there that are willing to help. I just need you to tell me what the problem is. So yeah, the, the adventure away. So one question, uh, one question like a seed grows many branches. Start something and see where it goes. We have a, a Hack the Box meetup, which is really good. It's, it's struggled a bit recently because obviously everyone's had some hectic schedule this year. But that drives a lot of traffic and brings a lot of people in. And Toko's got so much swag and so many vouchers to give away. We just need people to come in and, and, and take part. <laughs> <laughs> he still owes me a lot of swag. <laughs> right, so we also need, in my opinion, my personal opinion, I think, we struggle with time and we need money. Taking away, what did I say? Oh yes, taking away the moments that made up a dull day. We need time. Now, now part of the challenge, I'm not sure if I put this in elsewhere, part of the challenge was during COVID, we all had time galore. Lunchtime, there would be 30, 40 people on voice chat. Also, if you join voice chat, all you have to do is introduce yourself, then you can just chill on there. A lot of people are very scared about VC. We had a lot of time, and the problem is, I think I somewhat created the problem in that uh, I kind of helped Megalodon get in with OCD, I got Mooncake a job at Orange, and uh, Toko joined uh, RiskX. So all the people that were heavy involved, they all got really good jobs, so now they were too busy. So activity, like I said before, ask a question, give an opinion, contribute to a conversation, propose a challenge, and explore other channels or take part in a CTF. We have a, a channel called Role Assignment. We have a ton of roles there where you can add channels and take away channels. We even have a role called Hack South Light. So if you're a busy person, you just want to know sort of what's going on. It's got 15 or so handpicked channels that gets, you the, gets the message across to you. So why money? What can money do? Money can buy certifications for people that need them most. Money can help fund events that make more money. <laughs> I, think we just, I think we just got Rick, that's because I'm talking about money. That's the problem. <laughs> right. 
Money can buy swag. Because buying swag at cost and selling it with a bit of a markup generates more income. Money can buy people and contractors. Now what I'm not saying is Hack South is going to contract Gartner to do something fancy for us. But what I'm saying is I have, I have very limited time in my life because I run my own business. And then I've got B-Size, which is probably, I've probably spent more time on B-Size in my own business this year. But it allows us to get people in to help us maybe with marketing or get a trainer in like we did yesterday and do an online course, you know, that maybe costs a bit, but it brings value. Money helps us get these kinds of people. I got warned about talking about money in this, call, in this uh, talk. Okay, money can help someone get ahead and help those most vulnerable uh, get, get ahead of life. I'm personally, I'm part of Roundtable South Africa and it's, it's, a, it's a great model in that we raise money for our own clubhouse and we raise money for the community. And we have people approach us with problems and we look at our bank balance and we go, you know what, we can't pay for your cancer treatment but we can get you diesel to get to the hospital. In the context of Hack South, if someone needs to get to B-Size, for example, we can help and say, you know what, B-Size might change your life. We'll pay for your plane ticket. Small things like this. Right. So here's the challenge. Uh, and no, we have nothing set up, but we could start somewhere. Have a problem, think you know the solution, come tell us. Maybe we can solve it together. If you have a skill set that you think we could, that could be of value to us, whether it is e-commerce, whether it is marketing, branding, copywriting, B-Size needs a copywriter. Come speak to us and tell us. We will take that thing, we will empower you to do what you need to do, and then we can make a difference. Right, subscriptions. So we have a lot of models with uh, Discord where we can offer subscriptions. Now, Hack South will never, and this is on the internet, so it's a fact, will never charge a subscription to get any form of elite level access or a paywall. That will never be the case. The reason I brought this up is I have a lot of people going, hey, Hack South is cool. I'd like to help more. I haven't got time, but I've got cash. I'm like, pay us, you can pay us $5 a month. We'll give you a shiny roll. And maybe once a year we send you a nice challenge coin or pins or something just to say thanks. Cash flow creates change. So with the Innocent Lives Foundation, it's an it's a organization in the US, they asked me to help them with OSINT and when they found out I was a South African, they were like, mm, we can't do that. Um, they do this thing, yeah, the guy said that and he goes, but what you can do is you can subscribe as a donor, pay us, I don't know what it was, $20 a month and you get a really cool coin at the end of the year. And I thought, I like coins, so I was like, that's not a bad idea. Maybe we could do something with, uh, with Hack South. Sorieta's looking at this. I, I told my wife earlier, she doesn't come up till after this, get after this and go, Charlie, how much money do you need? <laughs> right. Corporate partnership. This is a touchy one for some people on the, the mod, mod, uh, mod side of things. So, you might, how might this look? You know, do we know? No, we don't. But I have some ideas. When we make swag, what stops us selecting four sponsors in a year to put their logos on the shoulders of our hoodies? Our hoodies and t-shirts this year were worn at all sorts of conferences across the world. There are people wearing a DEF CON, people wearing a black hat. It is a way to get more exposure for your company. I personally don't see it's as such a problem. But the thing we're always worried about is corporate alignment as a community. This is a discussion that we need to have. So we're also looking to uh, register as a non-profit or a PBO, which actually means we can get government funding. I am super not keen on government funding because I always think there's a string attached. But if there is ways to get access to things and actually contribute to other uh, um, like charitable government initiatives related to cybersecurity and tech, then, then why not? We are exploring our options to become an MPO, thanks to House of Growth. They are the same people that do B-Size auditing now, Mahala. Uh, another idea perhaps is achieving a set of milestones. Oh, so this is called partnership. So another idea is perhaps achieving a set of milestones and committing to a certain level of financial support 
and one becomes like a like a Hexhouse partnered cam company or a, a, a trusted, I don't know, like affiliate or it's something we need to discuss and figure out. And you can get your shiny little golden Hexhouse logo at the bottom of your website. It's probably a silly idea, but it's something that could be explored. Oh, and uh, I didn't know what the act was, but you know, if people make donations to us, we can issue the 18C thing uh, that you can write off against tax. So, one at a time. One join, one message, one question, one initiative, one ran at a time. You hold the password. Right, that's me. Age 36. <laughs> That's how I feel now. I actually got good rest last night, so I'm, I'm Gucci. Right, so other things we've explored very briefly. Uh, Jared, are we on time? Okay. So future intent, things, things we've thought about, uh, not really discussed is, uh, I, I dabbled in a bit of crypto uh, a few years ago when I had some cash flow. Um, never again. But uh, a lot of these communities, it's really good social experiments, a lot of communities had like office hours where, I mean, a lot of them did it every day, but like maybe once a month or once a Friday, we to get together like uh, as a community, discuss what's going on, tell you what our plans are, hear ideas and, 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 and see where it goes. We have definitely explored a podcast. Um, everyone's always like, you know what we should do? It's a podcast. <laughs> I love podcasts, but yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, that's something we could look at. A newsletter. There's a way we can put out more information. I just don't know how much people read their newsletters. Um, another thing that's been interesting, and we actually started discussing recently, um, I'm not, I was gonna say I've been a victim of this, is safe vulnerability disclosure. Now that's a whole other can of worms on itself, but I've had a lot of people, especially in the UK, that I know through TMHC, they go, hey Charles, I found something interesting on one of your government websites and I don't know where to report it. And I'm like, whoa, let's go talk somewhere else. And then he sends it to me, and then I choose like my trusted allies, and I message certain key people in in digital forensics, or maybe worked with the government or something. And I'm like, so if I had a friend that found something, could I send it to you and you look into it? And sadly, the, usually the answer is, Charlie, there's no point, bro. Like they're not going to do anything about it. Right. So collaborative security research. What stops? a couple of us getting together and doing something meaningful that we could present at something like B-Sides or Black Hat or DEF CON. We have the resources, we have the ability to do it, we just don't. And uh, something I think is, is, is important but tricky to manage is online safety content for normies or I heard uh, Harry Potter people call them muggles. <laughs> I still don't get Harry Potter, it makes no sense to me. All right, so in the beginning of my talk, I said there was a call to action. There isn't, uh, I just realized, but it's all good. We're going to go through the last few things. So we are an awesome medium-sized community, depending how you look at it. We want you to join. We need ideas. Ideas, no, we don't need ideas. Ideas, ideas are easy, and we all have a million of them. The Lord knows, especially with like this conference, I had ideas galore. Bring the idea, the concept, and let's work on a proof of concept. Let's turn thought into action, and action for the good of others. Tell people about Hack South. Bring your skills, bring your input, and we look forward to meeting you. Thank you. Is it, how long was that? Okay. Uh, 30. That's right. Any questions about Hack South? How did we join? Oh, yeah, that's a valid point. So if you go to, <laughs> <laughs> you go to URL, there's a button to click connect, and you connect. This is a fun fact. What do most people get wrong with joining Hack South? They join the server, and we've, we've created a barrier of entry to make sure everyone on it is safe. There's a little button where you accept the code of conduct. Please read and adhere to the code of conduct. Um, and then all we need you to do is introduce yourself. We do not need a dissertation on your life story unless you want to share it. But just say, hey, I'm, use your handle. 
uh, I found out about cybersecurity last week and I heard this is a place to learn. That's enough for us. And then a human, one of us, will delete your FNG role. I'm not super sure what FNG stands for. <laughs> I'm ex-military, so it comes with the territory. We'll delete the FNG role and we'll give you human. And then you get an automated uh, message that says, hey, welcome to Axel. Go to role assignment. And um, you can get roles. And the idea with role assignment, you go right to the top and look through the roles. There is student roles. There's job roles. There is... We thought of everything. The only thing we changed, because we had to rebuild the, the server at one point, uh, which took a while, is we removed all the vanity roles. But we need to set up the channel that we said we're doing it in January. Make it not looking right. We need to set up a channel with the vanity roles, because there's some fun, exciting roles. There is some silly roles that you can earn as well. We have uh, our muted role. If you go on TV, we get a look mom, mom on TV role. So there's a lot of fun stuff there. But yeah, that's, that's how you join. Um, any? Say again? Yeah, Discord. I think Discord is the future. But if you've never used Discord, it's, it, it looks complicated. But the fact of that is, you just got to understand DMs are on the one side, servers are on the other. It's like a layered approach. I wrote a blog about it because I had so many people ask me this. So I wrote a, uh, probably not the right name to welcome people, I wrote a skid guide to joining Hack South and explained everything. So every time someone goes, how do I do this part? I'm just like, I take the link and I'm like, do this part. And then people, uh, people check it out. Another thing we're looking for in Hack South, sorry, is blogs. Uh, Jared Rochette, I don't know if he's here. He was a volunteer today. He wrote a thing on LinkedIn about going from a barista to a QSA or uh, something like that. So I was like, I messaged him, I was like, hey, Jared, put that on Hack South. We'll speak to the web team. We'll uh, put it in Markdown and we'll post it. And then we can share it on social media. So we, we'd love people to contribute to that. This year we've been terrible with blogs. I take forever to do my Markdown because I've got a really silly way of thinking about it. So it takes me about three days to do it. But we, we're looking for something like that. Uh, any, any other questions? Last question? Yes. How likely or how strongly are you guys looking at the NPO registration? I think it's a natural course of action. Yeah, I put an 18C, I just don't know which around, yeah. So if anyone can provide that, my company will tax the donation. So that actually does have a benefit for some people. There is massive benefits. And if you come a PBO, like I'm doing, I've done it with Roundtable, it's a, it's a bit of a mission. But House of Growth, our accountants are, are really good. They're doing a director change at the moment and, and all that. I just think it, it makes sense. Like, you know, a lot of people said, oh, Charlie, you know, Megalon says, like, Charlie, we don't need money. Find the problem, then we can find the money. I do believe confidently we could find money, but I think we need, we need steady money coming in that we can spend money on valuable things, not, not valuable shiny things, <laughs> things that are valuable for the community. I've dealt with so many people as a recruiter where people go, hey, man, I heard your name, um, and I'm thinking about cybersecurity. Now, I'm not a cybersecurity person, but because I've been between people and companies recruiting, I've, I've, I've learned very much what, what works, what doesn't, what companies are looking for. So I tend to catch people before they make a bad investment. I go, whoa, whoa, whoa. I think you should consider this, this, and this is a career path you can look at. Here's three people you can talk to to understand it better. So it's a, it's a, it's a tricky thing to get right, but I think if we, if we, if we, we can bring the ideas, ideas are cool, and bring a bit of action to that. There's, a, there's, a, there's so much we can do. Um, and I think as an NPO, as a PBO, because as a PBO I found out the other day, you can just apply for grants. I'm, I, like I said, I'm very sketchy about getting money from the government because I wait, I wait for them one day to ask me for something. But I think there is massive benefits. And I've, I've, I didn't want to bring Roundtable into this, but there's, there's components of what Roundtable does that would, that would work very well with something like this or certain aspects of it. But yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. Last, last one, maybe. Hello. So, um, Badger. Coco and I have been chatting. And like last year, um, more about like blue team. Like my initial thing when I was doing some security stuff was Excel. It was very much like pen test, red team, and that sort of stuff. And I think 
you obviously weren't on the blue team channels. Yeah. Um, maybe more, more of that emphasis. And the other thing is, the one thing I did like about it was like the office hours thing. It was like, meet the team behind Hackstar. It took me a long time to unravel how this thing fits together, right? Yeah. Zero X copies and picking up copies in the Discord and whatever else to understand how it really fits together. So that mm. might also create more engagement and encourage people to participate more. They kind of understand how it yeah. fits together and what your goals are for the year. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest, like, have we communicated our intentions? Like, no. The, the problem we have, and it's a similar problem we have with B-Sides, like with B-Sides at the beginning of the year, I put out a call and saying, hey, I'm looking for artists. Like, if you've got a cool design or a theme idea, let us know. I, got, I had one submission. Uh, when I said, hey, if you wanted an international speaker, who would you choose? I heard nothing. So, yes, we need to post more. But I'm, I personally am struggling to make the time to create content. Now, maybe with ChatGPT and Canva bulk create, I can start. I use ChatGPT a lot uh, for, for other things. So if we create more content, we probably get more engagement because what's frustrating with us is if we get a good idea and we can post it in polls or in main or in announcements. Like we get so little responses. And it's like, well, is it, is it worth it? You know, if we look at the, I don't know what the metrics are about an election and how many people have to vote or whatnot, but it's like, if 20 people are saying, yes, let's do this out of 1,400, I mean, should we really do it? And that's a challenge. And the thing is, we, we are democratic in many ways, but a lot of times I just go, could they just do this? And then we'll see what happens. You know, asking for forgiveness and acceptance. But yeah, join us on Hack South. Check it out. If you have any questions, you can message me. <laughs> so I forgot to add this. We get so many messages uh, of people asking us to hack social media. I'm sure as most of us do in this, this conference. The last one I got was a guy saying, hey, could you hack my competitor in the trucking industry? Uh, and I was, I was like, why? What do you want? He goes, no, I want to see what he's quoting. <laughs> So I could beat his quotes. And I was like, maybe just make a more competitive model. And then I told him, asking that is, is super not good, and it's, this is not the place. But yeah, everyone, thanks very much. You want to talk afterwards?